Hi, welcome back to SAB Business Object Processing Framework Series. So today um, we're going to see how we can capture the change log. So let me explain the use case. Okay, so as you know, whenever somebody creating any transactional data or any data in the system, so who is creating that record and if after creation of the record, if someone else, some other user open the same record and change some value. So what is the change he done and who is changed and when that particular record has been changed. So these kind of change lock, you have to keep it for any modeling or any data which you are capturing in the system because then only you should be able to track that. Okay, who is changing and what time has been changed and why that has been. So these kind of reporting purpose, you have to capture this change lock information. So let so to capture this detail in the business object processing framework it's very simple so it's a simple modeling of you know a few attribute in your business uh, business object node level and add a, add a small determination it's a standard determination which you can just configure it and it will going to work straight forward for your business object let's see how we can model these particular uh, change log information for our business object Let's open our business object to capture this information in our business object level. So we should enhance our data structure first. To So as we know that if you want to capture who created it and what point in time the record has been created and who changed it and what point in time the record has been changed. So basically these are four attributes which you have to capture it on your data structure. So to have that, to be model on your business object. So SAB is providing a standard structure. The existing structure is available. We can straight forward and go ahead and use it. So let's go and type include. So we are going to include some standard um, structure. So this is the standard st structure. You can just add it here. So just for the you know, easy handling grouping purpose, I just use this as admin as a value here. So if you open this particular standard structure, so double click on the structure name. So it will ask you to save your changes. Yes. So you can see date and time, the creation, user ID who created, changed by and who is user ID who is changed. So all that has been already available. You can just use this structure for any of your business object. So similarly, I also want to include few more attribute to uh, on my root node to have uh, some more and uh, information of my order to be captured so i'm just mark so adding a few fields called mark deletion i'll put it as is it or et or the delete and also i say lc status Is it ret underscore yes. these two data elements are not available let me just model that quickly create the data element yes So we're just creating the data element, do the check. Yes. Check and activate the data element, which is for the deletion mark. And then go back, create the status data element. Yeah. So if you want to capture a few status of your order,
come back and create the domain. So I want to have some character one because it's very simple. Let's have a n as a new order. And then you have something called um, CS and form RS rejected and and then D for deliver. And finally, V for, for finish post. There are a few status to differentiate the, uh, the life cycle status of the order. So just save this and do the check activate domain and come back activate your data element and come back and activate your um, structure so once you are activated so since it has been part of the include structure of your combined structure and combined table type so as well as your database table so all that place it will be reflected automatically so you don't have to do anything there so you can see here these attributes are available by default and also the same way it is being reflected in your database table okay so but you have to this is a new attribute you model this attribute will not be part of your constants interface if you go here and if you open my attribute so we model that attribute so i have nodes attributes so let me open node attributes so under this we have uh, item details begin and end of item details and then i have a uh, root begin and end but i have only order id and customer id phone number and email i don't have these new attributes which i modeled it that's the reason you have to you just activated only your data structure you are not activated your business object changes so we have to go and do the check and correct and then do the check and generate your business object when you do the generation your system will you now generate your constants interface and the constants interface will be updated with the additional fields whatever you are added into your data structure now let's open the constants interface one more time and to verify that constants interface attributes node attribute and i'll go here so first one is item details and then you can see here you have root and end of root you can see here mark deletion user ids change time and all that is available so that's the reason we always say that you have to do the PO activation, your generation, which will generate your constants interface. Okay, so now we done with the uh, um, changing the data structure. Let's go and add our determination in in my business object to um, no to update these attributes. So whenever somebody editing these, my instance of order ID, and that has to be captured. So for that, let's model a determination, change, and right click, create determination. Let's say, set admin, yes. Update the change log, okay, and let's keep it as a persistent and we put the standard class so as i said so as i said like no you have a existing structure provided by sab you can just add that into your um data structure and same way you can use this data mission just model the data mission use this class just use the class and let's put that into where you want to trigger it so i want to have that to be triggered on my root node while creating 
updating both are needed because delete it's not going to because you are deleting the record it's not going to capture anything and then you want to have that to be so you can also explain that so you can give the better visibility to the user or somebody else reading the model what is the purpose of this determination what is doing it so it's expected to do the changes on these attribute so that information i'm just providing it and then you say evaluation point so where you want to capture it so you want to put it on after modify as well as before save finalize so both point you can mark it or i can put it only on save then when you just updated that point in time it will not reflect when you press save that's a point in time the you know, changes will be updated in your node so i'm just putting for both level so i don't have any dependent determination for this so i'll just save these changes yes my changes is done let's do the same approach check and correct then check the business object determination pattern is not supported determination pattern is not supported no that should not be the issue okay we have this here let's see let's verify what we are missing so determination category persistent class is fine and trigger condition on the root node create an update fine attributes are fine evaluation point okay and let me uncheck this and see whether before save and press save okay i don't want to run this on both time i just want to run it only on when i press save let's see this okay so i save this business object and do the check and correct yes and do the check consistent yes the error is gone okay so now this not allowing to to on modify because it's it's going to run so when you do any changes in one one of your attribute it's going to run the determination every time so that's going to cause a lot of performance of your you know uh, system so that's the reason you know you, either you should put it on say because you want to capture only the changes when they press committing that to database table so just capture it on the before save that would be the better way of modeling it which will give the better performance of your business object let's put it that way and generate it so yeah so a business object is consistent there is no error and your changes it's been uh, business object has been generated with the updated constants interface so thank you the next session let's see how we can test these changes via our business object test transaction code thank you